I'm sure many of you by now have seen Jenna Marbles' satire titled, Thanks Obama. Well, President Obama does not run the country. No President of the United States has ever run the country. I have heard many say that President Obama should take responsibility for the state of the economy because he's in the captain's chair. Well, a captain runs a ship and gives orders that all of the crewmen follow. They follow his orders without question. Obama has no such authority. We have three branches of government, and it is not Obama who passes laws, but Congress, the legislative branch. Obama can try to convince Congress to pass his laws, but he really can't do much of anything without Congress. Furthermore, all branches of the U.S. government are subject to the same U.S. Constitution, and that Constitution is, in practice, interpreted by the federal judiciary headed by the U.S. Supreme Court. For the sake of argument, though, let's pretend that Obama actually did run the entire federal government. Let's pretend that all branches of the federal government had to do his bidding, had to follow his orders without question. We still have a federation. We still have 50 states. And many powers are left to the states, mainly those powers not mentioned in the U.S. Constitution. That's according to the Tenth Amendment. President Obama, therefore, in this scenario, would still have to coordinate with the 50 states. Now let's take it even further. Let's pretend that we had a unitary state. Let's pretend that Obama had absolute control over every level of government, federal, state, and local. Well, all of government spending equals about 38% of our GDP. That means that the other 62% or so of GDP is private sector, so it, that wouldn't even fall under Obama's control in this scenario. Those who say that Obama is in the captain's chair are assuming not only that Obama is an absolute dictator, that he has absolute control over every level of government, but they're also assuming that we have a centrally planned Soviet-style economy. As a political science professor focusing heavily on American government, I can tell you that is simply not how our country is run. Accusations that Obama is a communist aside, we just don't do things that way, and Obama has no such power. Aside from the fact that nearly two-thirds of our economy is private sector, Obama has faced particular difficulty getting his agenda passed through Congress. In the first two years of the Obama presidency, every single bill that became law had to go through cloture. That is, not a mere majority in the Senate, but he needed 60% of the Senate to vote for it just to allow it to even come to a vote. Thomas Sowell, a critic of President Obama, has readily admitted that Obama has faced obstructionism, severe obstructionism. Thomas Sowell thinks it's a good thing. He argues that our economy is recovering in part because Obama has not been able to implement his agenda. If Obama, therefore, cannot implement his agenda, if he cannot get Congress to support most of what he wants, how is it right to blame him for the state of the entire economy? Our country certainly faces great challenges, and Obama is in a position of public trust, probably the single most important position of public trust. He should certainly be subject to scrutiny, but can't we limit our scrutiny to the realm of truth? Damn it! <laughs> no fish! Thanks, Obama! <laughs> My attempt to pull a stunt and have my sprite spurt all over me didn't work. Thanks, Thanks Obama. <laughs> <laughs>